So the screen is yours. Uh, thank you, Farooq, for the introduction. And uh, hello, everyone. So I'm not able to see my audience. So it's, it's a kind of uh, like a weird thing. Uh, I, I need to talk to uh, myself on the screen. So that is fine. So once again, uh, I am Saqib and uh, uh, and I am uh, as uh, I am working as a student professor at the Canadian Institute for Cybersecurity. And my current research interests include human centric cybersecurity that includes fake news detection, uh, insider threats, edge computing, security and privacy concerns in smart cities and blockchain. So uh, today my talk is about the rise of fake news through social media issues and challenges. And uh, here is the brief outline of my talk. So I will spend a few minutes on defining what is fake news according to the literature, uh, followed by uh, propagation of fake news through social media platforms. Then we will talk about research issues and challenges followed by questions and and answer session so what's fake news well precisely there's no universal definition not even journalism different scholars have different inter interpretation of the fake news for example uh, as per these researchers fake news is the content that is intentionally written to mislead or misinform readers but can be verified as false by means of other sources uh, and as per this researcher, uh, it is a fabricated information that mimics news media content in form, but not in organizational process or intent. So uh, right now, it's really not possible to define all those definitions. Uh, but to my understanding, all, all those definitions revolve around these two concepts, that is authenticity and intent. So by Authenticity, uh, we mean that fake news contains the false information that can be verified later on. Uh, and by intent, we mean the fake news uh, has been written with some dishonest intention, uh, maybe to, uh, to mislead people or some other malicious uh, uh, activity. And there are some other terms as well. Uh, which are often connected to fake news. For example, uh, the one term the, the one term is satire. So by satire is again, it's a kind of news, but in satire, the intention is not to harm someone. Rather, it's to maybe fool someone or maybe to entertain the audience. It really depends like uh, what is the purpose of, of that content. Then we have false connection. So again, in false connection, uh, Captions uh, say something different, and headlines and visuals are, you know, something different. That's why there's a uh, we we call it false connection. Uh, then we have imposter content again when the genuine sources are impersonated with false and made-up sources. So again, there is a huge list of the uh, uh, you know definitions here, and we can spend whole day just to define uh, that content. But like these are the basic, uh, I can say the uh, the basic components of fake news. And I assume that uh, based on my this discussion on the definition of fake news, uh, you guys have some idea now like what's fake news. So my question to all of you will be, have you ever shared any fake news online? And if you have kindly, you know, uh, share that experience through the uh, maybe through the chat window. I don't know, like uh, at, the end, at the end of the session, you can share uh, something like that if you have ever shared any fake news. So these are some of the uh, uh, now. So this was about the fake news. Now let's talk about the propagation of fake news. So there was a recent study by Pew Research. Uh, I believe this article was published in December 2018. And as per the report, uh, the social media has surpassed the printed media in the United States, means one in five US adults, they often get news through social media. And, and 
this issue is really not within the United States. Uh, there was one more study uh, by United Nations in 2019. Uh, you can read the uh, full report here. So as per this report, majority of, majority of the people uh, from these uh, countries believe that the, uh, the social media has increased their access to information. So when I am saying increased access to information, that includes fake news as well. From all these stats, uh, we can uh, assume that we are surrounded by fake news, unfortunately, and uh, most of us do rely uh, uh, on the on the information that is available on these social media platforms. There might be some exceptions, but I believe most of us do rely on the uh, on the news articles that are being shared through social media. Now, uh, let me give you a few examples uh, on that. Uh, so, uh, there was a study conducted by a group of research uh, by a group of researchers from the Stanford University. So, they plotted a uh, a graph where they showed that during the uh, U.S. election to the 2016, uh, there were like you can see here the Facebook engagement in millions and here on the x-axis you have a number of sites like 570. These were fake news websites. So when the election started, the interaction between the Facebook uh, uh, users and these fake websites increased. You can see the graph. And when the election was over, the uh, engagements reduced to a large extent. So this graph itself, itself says something. And again, during the same period, uh, there were top 20 uh, fake election stories. And those fake election stories generated around 8 million shares and reactions on Facebook alone. And before the election, like preceding the election day, about 30 million tweets uh, were shared by the uh, people. And out of those 30 million tweets, 25% tweets were mostly, uh, uh, they, they, their main focus was to spread the fake or biased news. And here is an example of a bogus tweet about the explosion at the White House. And you can see this, uh, this spike in the graph within fractions of seconds, like millions of dollars were wiped off from the US markets just on a single tweet. So you can, I mean, you know, I don't need to say anything. Uh, you can yourself assume uh, what fake news can do. And take the example of this COVID-19, when, when the whole world is battling with this pandemic, we still have issues. So there are a few interesting examples uh, I want to share with you. Uh, this was the news article that was shared in Canada and the, the, the news was, did China steal coronavirus from Canada and weaponize it? Strange. And there was a myth about the, uh, that 5G mobile networks the, spread, uh, spread the COVID-19 and I don't know like how many of you are aware of this news, but when people heard that 5G networks are responsible, you know, to spread the COVID, I can, uh, I, I will share a video with you so that you can. So, so after the people heard that, you know, 5G is responsible for the COVID, so the people started attacking the towers. So here yeah, you can see they burned down one tower and, uh, they vandalized some towers as well. Right. So again, uh, in order to spread in order to spread the fake news, you don't need any expensive tools. So that is the real motivation of of uh, of attackers uh, who want to you know uh, work in this uh, malicious domain. So here is a malicious user. So first of all he really doesn't need any tool. He can create a content and share 
that content on his own platform. Maybe it can be Facebook, it can be LinkedIn, it can be Twitter, it can be WhatsApp and so on. And if you are in a category of, uh, I can say, uh, the black uh, the black hatter or the gray uh, hatter, then maybe you can use some tools. For example, uh, they create uh, computation algorithms. We call them bots. So these bots automate the process of spreading the news. So means once I created a bot, then that bot will periodically share some news, some fake news on the assigned platform. So initially, uh, Twitter worked uh, in this domain and they designed some algorithms that can detect these bots. So uh, it's it's relatively easy to uh, detect the bots uh, because if we are able to identify the pattern of these bots, then we can, you know, uh, we can identify and detect, detect them. For example, uh, these bots maybe they share the news on weekends or they start sharing the news after 5 p.m. So using certain parameters, we can identify them. But now we have a new menace and that is the new cyborg. That is the cyborg. So cyborg is half human and half bot. So once there were so once there were algorithms which were capable to detect the bots, cyborgs are very hard to detect because sometimes this malicious user uh, uses this platform to spread the news, and sometimes the algorithm starts sharing the news. So in cyborg, we don't have a specific uh, pattern by which we can detect it. And rest procedure is same. So again, the main uh, motivation of, of spreading the fake news, it can be finance related, it can be uh, some, some political agenda, and it really, and it really uh, requires less cost to, to create and spread the fake news. So uh, when we were doing some analysis on the, uh, on the uh, Twitter, we found that initially, the fake news is created or you can share it within a, within a specific cluster. So for example, these users, initially they share this news among themselves. And once that news got circulated, there was someone else on the other side of the uh, globe. For example, uh, uh, from, from this side, it's Nigeria. And uh, so initially these guys share the news and then finally, uh, someone from this cluster shared news uh, with this guy and unfortunately we were not able to dig it further because of the limitations of API. There are certain limitations by which uh, uh, by which we need to do our research. So after this uh, step, we are not able to uh, to analyze like how the cycle works. So in order to address uh, these, you uh, know, in, in, in order to address this concern of fake news detection, the, sorry, yeah, the focus of the current research work is mainly uh, on understanding the semantics of the fake news articles uh, and, and, high, and by highlighting the differences between the fake news articles and the real news articles. And for that, we use natural language processing techniques. For example, uh, we, we can use sentiment analysis to find uh, their intent. We can use readability score. We can use DF-IDF uh, technique. There are different techniques. And once we are able to understand the semantics of the, uh, of the news content, then the researchers are trying to explore different machine learning models uh, so that they can train their model and uh, det detect the fake news. So this is one of our recent uh, method where we analyzed a couple of uh, fake news data sets and then we identified a few features and then uh, after identifying the features, we trained the model. Although we got a good accuracy, uh, we got the accuracy of like 95 or 94 percent. But again, that's not enough. And it's my personal opinion that NLP and AI is not enough to tackle the issue of fake news. Why? Uh, let me let me give an example. 
So here's a simple video. I will show you that how easy it is to create a fake news article and the output of this fake news article will be precisely in, and will be precisely and exactly like like it is like it's from some real news source. So what I will do. For example, I will put some headline maybe uh, President uh, X, Y, uh, Z is uh, dead. Yeah. And you can put any newspaper name. So here I will put, for example, news uh, XX. And I'll put the author name, for example, author ABC. And then I'll put the article text. Maybe uh, today morning, President X, Y, Z was found dead. Dash, 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 dash. So I will create it and I will show you the output, how the article will look like. Yes, so here is my headline President X, Y is dead by author ABC and this is the news. So when so if you want to use NLP approaches to identify the difference between the real and the uh, fake news, it's really hard because you can use online grammar tools to improve the writing style. You can use these tools to to uh, make the fake news resemble exactly. Uh, what the real news look like and imagine in this scenario, for example, I can put the name of the newspaper as I don't know uh, some some well, re well renowned newspaper name and some renowned author name and I will just cut this piece and share it on my social media and believe me, most of my friends or followers will spread or will share this, you know, with their uh, fellow uh, followers or friends. And this is how this vicious cycle will go on, go on. And in the end, we can have, you know, different uh, uh, issues in terms of like it can affect finance sector. It can affect uh, it can promote racist ideas and so on. So, OK, yeah. So now what are the research issues and challenges? So again, there are so many research issues and challenges that we can spend two to three days just on the discussion. So I will just uh, address three emerging research challenges and issues that we need to work on immediately. The first one is fake news creators identification. So again, uh, as uh, as I mentioned, uh, the attackers they use different tools like you know, in in the form of bots, in the form of cyborgs, in the form of trolls. So after a human registers an account, uh, he or she may set some automated program to post the tweets during his absence. And from time to time, he participates to tweet and interact with friends. So here, here is an example of the Australian bushfire where the bot and troll accounts were involved in this information campaign. And similarly, we have cyborgs. Again, as I mentioned, the cyborgs, they are half human and uh, half machine. So how to identify them is a real challenge because of because of so many issues like we do have limited uh, uh, access to, to social media platforms. So we are not able to extract the information of users or of the individual accounts. This is one critical challenge that we need to address. Then we have data diversity and dynamicity. So again, there are numerous potential data sources in the form of print media, in the form of blogs, in the form of websites, along with the social media websites. So all these data sources are diverse in nature, means all these sources can be in the form of a picture, in the form of a video, in the form of a, a, a short message service, SMS, in the form of audio, so when you have so many data sources along with the diversity. 
the the verification of that content becomes a challenge and as per the stats of two media consultants uh, uh, levis and chad uh, it's really a good example so like they showed like after every one minute what happens on the internet so 18.1 million texts are sent uh, 188 million emails are sent 41.6 million messages are sent and and you know and so on so when you have so much diverse information in different formats to verify that information is really a big challenge and in order to address this challenge unless and until we don't have any mutual agreement with with uh, uh, with these platforms it's really hard to to identify and detect the fake news so this is one of the uh, one of the second uh, critical challenge and this challenge is further exaggerated by the advancements in deep fake technologies so if you google you will find the softwares like fake app deep face lab so deep face lab looks like this so here you can generate any fake uh, any fake video and share that video through any social media platform for so for example here is a picture uh, breaking news donald trump sold his office in five million dollars and this person resembles like Donald Trump, but he is not. So uh, I can say the accuracy of generating this photograph was not good. But again, if you have more data about a specific person, like you have his voice, you have his uh, like you have his voice data and some other stuff, you will be able to generate exactly the same video. And if you just Google it, you will find tons of videos uh, uh, you know, generated through these softwares like Deep Face Lab software or, or Fake App. And the last challenge uh, is the data sharing platforms. So right now, there is a lack of comprehensive and representative data sets that sufficiently reflect the dynamic nature of fake news content. So again, I can say, I mean, take a simple scenario. For example, you are training your algorithm uh, your your machine learning algorithm may be on business and finance uh, related news articles, right? And then you have some uh, you have some fake news article related to lifestyle. So definitely, when you will check your input against the trained algorithm uh, uh, that focused on on these two aspects, the accuracy will be definitely low. So if you take the current example, for example, we have LIRA data set, we have uh, ISO data set. There are, numerous, there are numerous data sets available, but they are narrow in scope. Uh, for example, most of them focus on the political news or, or on, the, uh, on the finance. But again, we have different categories of news. We have lifestyle-based news articles. We have finance-based news articles. We have sports-based news articles. We have business-based news articles. So unless and until we don't have that comprehensive data set, I'm afraid that you know uh, we won't be able to do much in terms of the fake news uh, detection. So these are some of the challenges within these issues. So for example, right now, I am working in this specific area that how we can identify cyborgs. But the issue is, we really don't have sufficient API, APIs to, to get the data or to, to extract the information. Uh, Twitter is the only uh, application, I believe, uh, that allows us to extract the data to a certain extent. But again, it's really hard. You have, so you have Facebook, you have Instagram, and there are some platforms, for example, Telegram, where you don't even you know, know who is the user. So, in Cyborg right now, uh, the main challenge is how to predict the pattern of these Cyborgs because it varies. Then it comes to data diversity and dynamicity. So again, the question arises when 
which topic and which platform the attackers want to use to spread the fake news. And the last, but not the least, the data sharing platform. So as I mentioned, it's really hard to, to create a comprehensive data set because we don't have enough resources to grab the data uh, from different platforms. And if we are able to address these three fundamental issues, I believe we can solve fake news to a large extent. So to conclude my talk, unfortunately, I need to say that fake news has become an integral aspect in our digital lives. And the linguistic and ML based approaches alone are not enough to detect fake news. We need collaborative efforts. So especially uh, I'm looking for the people uh, with diverse backgrounds. Uh, I'm looking for the people from the faculty of law. I'm looking for the people from faculty of human sciences because I believe collaboratively we can address this uh, this emerging challenge. So if you are if you are interested to work in this domain, kindly contact me and we can go from there. And just a basic guideline before sharing any news article, do some research, at least check from other reliable sources that whether this news is uh, reliable or, or not. These are some of the references that I used and thank you again for your valuable time. So as I mentioned, I'm looking for the people from diverse backgrounds to, to work on this uh, emerging uh, issue. If you are interested, you can contact me through my email, sakib.hakak at ritofunb.ca. So thank you again for your valuable time. And if you have any question, uh, you are free to ask, ask me. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Sakib.